It's a great joy to welcome you again to the Kanguka Broadcast. My name is Chris Nikumana. Today is Wednesday. Once again, I want to speak words of encouragement to you and I want you to understand that the children of God should walk by faith and not by sight. The reason we wake up and pray in the morning is because we have faith. You don't pray in the morning just because you have problems. You wake up to pray because you believe in God. You believe that there is God in heaven. You believe that he hears you and he has your life in his hands. Do you understand this? God has your life in his hands. If you know this, you wake up and you say, God, I thank you for allowing me to wake up this morning. You lift up your day to God and you speak to him. Speak to him with faith and do not complain. I am wants to hear you speak to him before you leave your home. I've been saying this for many years. You shouldn't leave your home without speaking to I am. You were created by him. You are his child. You need to speak to him. You need to give thanks to him. You need to speak about his glory and his power. If you have a problem, you can tell him about it through prayer. You can make your request to him. What do you ask for in the morning? Before you start making requests for future issues, ask him to be with you during the day. Ask him to walk with you. Ask him to lead you. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide your thoughts and your words. You need to know that he has full control. He is the one who enables you to do all things you're going to do. You need to ask for wisdom for that day. In the same way that the children of Israel received manna each day, you should ask for a daily measure of wisdom each morning. You should also ask him to close Satan's doors and to open his doors. If you do this, you will be able to defeat the spirit of complaining. When you face a problem in the middle of the day, you will be able to say, I have prayed in the morning. He started my day with I am. He knows everything that's going to happen. When you start your day like that, you will have faith. I want you to have faith in the morning. You receive victory in the morning. Don't wait until the end of the day. You have to start in the morning when you wake up. I am talking about the people who start their day in the morning. I know that some people work at night and they start their day in the evening or at night. But regardless, when you start your day, you should have faith for the next 20 24 hours until you wake up the next day. In Mark chapter 11 verse 24, Jesus said, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. If you are listening to me this morning, I want you to know that whatever you are going to ask I am this morning, you need to believe that you have received it. You don't need to see those things with your eyes, but you believe that you have received them. If you ask him to protect you, then you leave your house believing that he is protecting you. If you ask him to be with you, then you leave your house believing that he is with you. If you ask him to give you wisdom, then you leave your house believing that he has given you wisdom. You don't need to see it first before you believe it, but you believe it in the morning. You should be filled with faith when you finish praying. You should be filled with faith when you leave your home. Are you filled with faith when you leave your home? You can know everything that's going to happen during that day and you don't need to know it. But there is one thing without any doubt. You know that you've started the day with I am. His angel is with you. He heard all the words you said. Whatever you ask him in the morning, you should believe that you have received it. Verse 24 says that you should believe that you've received everything you ask for and you will have it. You will have it in the future, but you have received it as soon as you pray in the morning. I am has heard your request. I want to encourage you and tell you that I am has heard your prayer request. Some may say, how come I have asked but it hasn't happened yet? Let me tell you that if it hasn't happened yet, it's because he doesn't think that it should happen the same day. God has his own timing. Even though you don't know his plans, you should pray the following prayer. I have taught many people to pray this way and they give thanks to God because it works. You should pray to God and say, God, I lift up the day that's about to start. Please remove everything that's not from you. Close all the doors that aren't from you. You need to say this without any doubts. You must believe in your heart that all the doors that aren't from I am will be closed and he will fulfill the plans he has for your life. He will open his doors. If his door isn't open right away, 
day, it means that it will be open in God's perfect timing. If at the end of the day you realize that God hasn't opened yet a particular door, then you give thanks to Him and say, I thank you that you decided to not open this door today. When your time comes, it will be opened. God has the key to your life. We need to learn to humble ourselves and we should let I am take control of our lives. We should let him lead us in everything. If we do that, we will have peace and his hour will eventually come. But we need to keep praying and we need to believe that he hears all our prayer requests and we receive them right away, but he fulfills them in his perfect timing. Now in the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the book of Samuel. We're still in chapter 17. But I really want you to understand chapter 17. This is my favorite chapter in this book. You may say that you don't have any overwhelming problems, but it's only a matter of time. You will encounter some big problem at some point, or you've already encountered one. We all have to go through this. We all face some overwhelming problems at some point. I told you that you should stop fighting on your own. You need to lower yourself so Christ can manifest himself in you. Unfortunately, we often try to fight on our own. We want to achieve victory on our own. Satan is fighting with you because he sees you. You need to humble yourself. You need to accept to die to yourself. You need to tell God that you can't do it on your own. Tell him that you can't do it on your own strength. That way, certainly we have to fight against Christ. That's why Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. But today, many children of God don't want to be crucified with Christ. To be crucified with Christ means that you crucify your carnal nature, you crucify your own power because you need the power of Christ to be manifested in you. Today I want to show you another important thing that happens in verse 48. It says that when Goliath arose and he started walking towards David, David hurried and he ran towards Goliath. Praise the Lord. This is very important. You can see that there was a big difference between David's reaction and the reaction of all the other men of Israel. Remember that we saw at the beginning of this chapter that Goliath would come every morning towards the men of Israel and he would scare them and despise them with his words. And we saw in verse 24 that every time Goliath came towards the men of Israel, they all fled from him and they were terrified. I hope that you understand this. These were all grown men. They were soldiers. They had weapons. But whenever they saw Goliath, they all fled. They all fled away from one man. But in verse 48, we can see that David had a completely different reaction. David did the exact opposite. When Goliath started to walk towards him, he ran towards Goliath. Let me ask you a question. How do you react when you encounter a problem in your life? Do you flee or do you battle against the problem? Do you run away from the problem or do you run towards the problem? If you complaining about your problems, you need to understand that you are fleeing like the men of Israel. You are running away from your problem. You are seeking help. You want to be rescued. So you talked about your problems everywhere you go. And you lose hope and you cry just like the men of Israel. But when Goliath came towards David, David didn't just stand and wait for him. No. David ran towards Goliath. When the men of Israel looked at Goliath, they saw death and they were terrified. But when David looked at Goliath, he saw an opportunity to give glory to God. He saw victory because he knew the majesty of his God. That's the key right here. How do you view your God? It's true that Goliath is in front of you. You're facing a big problem. Maybe it's a financial problem or a health problem or a marriage problem or an issue at work. But regardless of what it is, how big is your God compared to your problem? Who is bigger? David was certain that God is much bigger. 
bigger than Goliath. He never considered running away from Goliath because he knew the majesty of his God. David knew that his God has Goliath's life in his hands. David knew that it's his God who enabled Goliath to stand and to speak. That's why you can see in verse 48 that David didn't flee away from Goliath, but he actually ran towards Goliath. This is a powerful verse and I love it very much. We need to learn to battle against our problems in the name of Jesus. I will say it again in the name of Jesus. Don't try to use your own strength or your own intelligence. You need to believe that you have victory in the name of Jesus. So David was able to achieve victory. Many of you are familiar with this story. In verse 49, we can see that David put a stone in his sling and he struck Goliath in his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell in his face to the ground. There is a very important spiritual lesson we need to learn from this and God willing, I will explain it tomorrow. We need to understand that faith always leads to victory. May I am bless you. I wish you all a blessed day. If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.